Hi, today we will give a brief introduction about time series database. Uh, first is the motivation. Obviously, many time series are ubiquitous. We measure the feature of physical world and get the corresponding data point. And since everything changes over time, the data also should have their time dimension, uh, like the blood pressure, rainfall value, stock price, etc. What we're interested in is not only the number, but also the curve or the trace of the data. So, what's the de definition of time series? A time series is a sequence of real numbers re represent the measurement of a real variable at equal time intervals. A series is identified by a source name and a metric name. It consists of a sequence of timestamp and value combination ordered by timestamp. Uh, where does time series data come from? We know that time series occur in numerous medical, scientific, and business applications. Like, we can get the stock price from the stock market, get temperature values from the thermometer readings, and get heart rate or blood pressure from some ICU device. Actually, in today, most of these time series data are from sensors, and the sensory data is what we are interested in when working on embedded systems. Uh, about the time series database. Time series database is a large collection of time series. It is a software system that is optimized for handling time series data, and the implementation of a time series database must be specialized for time series data. So how does it specialize? Time series data has specific pattern in its workload. For writing operations, it takes about 95% to 99% of total operations. Writes are always sequential appearance. They always arrive in timely order. Writes to distant past are rare. Most measurements are written within a few seconds or minutes after being observed. Updates are rare, and the delays are in bulk, beginning at the start of history and the proceeding in contiguous blocks. Delays the individual measurement or delays from random location in history are rare. Due to the huge volumes of the data and income rate, it is important to have a method to remove the irrelevant sample data. For reading operations, uh, data is much larger than memory and rarely read, so caching typically doesn't work well. Systems are often I.O. bound. Reads are sequential per series in ascending or descending order. Concurrent reads and reads of multiple series at once are really common. And besides, the time series database should also have pre-computed partial result, since real-time computation of summaries is very inefficient. A good time series database is able to provide pre-computed summaries of the information in order to enable quick presentation of graphs uh, with enough details. And the graphics output is also important, because when dealing with time series, it is important to be able to show the trend in graphic easily. There's an open source implement implementation for this, which is called Grafana. It is an excellent tool for showing dashboard with time evolution graphics and it provides connection to the most relevant database the engines. The main use of a time series data, a database is for an analytics. They are expected to provide information on market trends, usage of resources, weather and similar uh, measurements. This information is used for root cause analysis, pinpointing anomalies and finding patterns. Tools such as R and Python are quite appropriate for this task. In fact, these packages are available in many time series databases. For the performance and the scaling, a time series database should be distributed by design with no bottom clustering or sharding, because it should have a distributed characteristics to support large scale data query tasks. And it also should uh, send the query to the data. Instead of bringing the data to the query, it means automatic query distribution. Queries may touch many gigabytes or terabytes of data. 
So moving data across the network is not scalable. It is efficient per node, so it's capable of running at large scale with, without requiring you know, thousands of servers. Besides, time series database is able to take advantage of powerful hardware like uh, uh, flash storage, big RAMs, multi-core CPUs. And for the structure, we know that a regular relational database would store each tuple as a separate row, which means that the data table grows vertically. This causes a lot of duplication as the static information like and the ID and the timestamp are repeated in every row. Take an easy example. If we want to understand the power consumption for loading balancing, we need to sample and store the power, uh, power meter data in short time interval, like six minutes. If there are uh, one million meters, uh, it means we have to add about 80 billion new rows per year, which is quite uh, in inefficient. Uh, the basic idea of time series database is to save data in a matrix that can add columns dynamically. For example, the IBM InfoMix time series database. It is a relational database with time series features. The structure is really simple. It breaks down the data in two pieces, the static and dynamic. The static data is the meter information that does not change, like the meter ID, and the dynamic Dynamic data is the information that changes, like the meter readings. We can think of it as two tables, the front table and the rear table. The front table contains the static information, and it is like a regular relational table with a primary key. The dynamic meter uh, readings will be stored in the rear table according to time. So uh, each meter's data is stored in a single row. When the time increases, it grows horizontally and when any new meters, it grows vertically. The InfoMix is a typical commercial time series database. Actually, there are more open time series databases, which is much more useful. This table shows a ranking of time series databases, ranked by DB engines, according to their popularity. Most of them, like InfluxDB and OpenTSDB, are widely used and will support it. Next, my partner will introduce two typical TSDB, uh, the uh, OpenTSDB. The OpenTSDB is a distributed, scalable time series database written on top of HBase. It was written to store, index, and serve matrix collected from computer systems at a large scale and make this data easily accessible and graphable. Due to HBase scalabilities, one OpenTSDB allows to collect thousands of metrics from tens of thousands of hosts and applications at a high rate. OpenTSDB will never delete or downsample data and can easily store hundreds of billions of data points. OpenTSDB consists of a time series daemon as well as a set of command line utilities. Interaction with OpenTSDB is primarily achieved by running one or more of the TSDs. Each TSD is independent. There is no master, no shared state, so you can run as many TSDs as required to handle the load you throw at it. Each TSD uses the open source database each base to store and retrieve time series data. Users of the TSD never need to access the each base directly. We can communicate with the TSD via a simple Telnet-style protocol, an HTTP API, or a simple building interface. The first step in using OpenTSDB is to send time series data to the TSDs. A time series is a series of numeric data points of some particular matrix of the time. Each time series consists of a matrix plus zeros or more text associated with this matrix. A matrix is a particular piece of data that you wish to check over time. In OpenTSDB, a time series data point consists of a matrix name, a unique timestamp, a value, and a set of text that describe the time series the point belongs to.
The text allows you to separate similar data points from different sources or related entities, so you can easily graph them individually or in groups. One common use case for text consists in annotating data points with the name of the machine that produced it, as well as the name of the cluster or pool the machine belongs to. This example contains six data points that belong to four different data time series. Each different combination of Michigan text makes up a different time series. All of the four time series are for one or two metrics my circle dot byte received or my circle dot byte sent. A data point must have at least one tag and every time series for a matrix should have the same number of tags. And then I will introduce the naming schema and the aggregation of the OpenTSDB. Unlike the RRD style schemes, OpenTSDB uses a combination of tag key value pairs that allows for flexible queries with very fast aggregation. Every time series in OpenTSDB must have at least one tag. Now if we want the data from an individual core, we can craft the query like this. Sum semicolon sys.cpu.user host equals to web server 01, CPU equals to 42. If we want all of those cores, we simply drop the CPU tag and ask for host equals to web server 01. This will give us the aggregated result for all cores of the server. If we want the result for all the servers, we simply request like this, sum semicolon sys.cpu.user. The underlying data schema will store all of the sys.cpu.user time series next to each other so that the aggregating the individual value is very fast and efficient. The OpenTSDB will automatically aggregate all of the time series for the metric in a query if no tags are given. If one or more tags are given or defined, the aggregate will include all time series that matches on that tag, regardless of other tags. But the queries against one particular metric will take longer as there are more rows to go to. OpenTSDB allows for writing data for a given time series in any order you want. This enables significant flexibility in writing data to a TSD, allowing for populating current data from a system and then importing historical data at a later time. Writing data points in OpenTSDB is generally as important within an hour of the original write. This means that you can write the value at a timestamp and then write value again for the same timestamp and nothing bad will happen. But writing two different values with the same timestamp will throw a duplicate data point instruction. This is due to a difference in encoding integers and floating point numbers. If the first value was an integer and the second a floating point, the duplicate error will always be thrown. For scalability and throughput, if we have many sources, it's best to scale by running multiple TSDs and using a load to distribute the write. We can also set up a Hadoop, Hadoop and HBase cluster with multiple servers, which will automatically distribute copies and spread operations among the multiple servers. And it can increase the performance and storage. If we need even more support or storage, we just add nodes or disks. The easiest way to get started with OpenTSDB is open up terminal and turn the client, connect to a TSD, and issue a push command and hit enter. The turn the command format is a, as the example shows. Each push can only send a single data point. And also, data can also be sent over HTTP in formats supported by serializer plugins in the version of OpenTSDB 2.0. Multiple unrelated data points can be sent in a single HTTP post request to save the bandwidth. We can also use fetch to import from a file. The import command enables bulk loading of time cells data into OpenTSDB. 
We can provide one or more files, and OpenTSDB will parse and load the data. For querying and reading data, OpenTSDB offers a number of means to extract data, such as CLI tools, HTTP API, and the GMU plot graph. The query component consists of the start time, end time, metric, aggregation function, text, sound sampler, and the rate. The aggregation function is a mathematical function to use in combining multiple time series, merging two or more data points for a single time span into a single value. The downsampler is an optional interval in the function to reduce the number of data points returned so that you can extract better information from the graph or pass less data over the connection. And the rate is also an optional flag to calculate the rate of the change for the result. So what will happen upon the query of the OpenTSDB? Firstly, the query is parsed and verified to make sure that the format is correct and that the matches text names and the text values exist. And then it sets up scanner for the underlying storage system. If the query didn't have any text or text values, then it will grab any rows of data that match the matrix ID and timestamp. If the query does have one or more text defined, then it will still scan all of the rows matching the matrix ID and timestamp, but return only the rows that contain the requested tag. And then the OpenTSDB will organize all the data returned into groups if required. Then, if the downsampling was required, each individual time series is downsampled into smaller time spans. Then, the each group of data is aggregated using the specific aggregation function. If the rate flag was detected, each aggregate will then be adjusted to get the rate. Finally, all the results are returned to the corner. And currently, OpenTSDB offers a simple built-in grid accessible by opening the browser and navigating the host and port where the TSD is running. It provides a quick means of building a useful graph with the data in our system. There are three main areas of the grid. The first is the notification area, a tab area that serves as a menu. And the second is a query builder that lets you select what will be displayed and how to display. And the third is a graph area that displays the query result, as was shown in the pictures. So at the end, here are the references we used in our presentation. Thank you very much.